Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today what I'd like to do is revisit the castle project. Now, um, one thing I should mention before I, I go into this is that this is actually going to be a mock-up. Uh, I originally cut the outer wall for the castle too thin, and after rereading the customer instructions, I realized that it was supposed to be wider, so I went and I recut the outer wall for the castle. That left me with basically a free castle wall on hand to work with. And I realized that because I, I have so many new things to learn on this project, techniques, um, new materials, new adhesives, all that stuff, uh, that I wanted to basically take this piece through to a completed, relatively completed stage so I can learn from it and then take that knowledge and improve upon it for the final castle project. And I've already made a, a few mistakes that I've learned from um, and a few things that I want to still yet to observe. How does the foam coat interact with the um, expanded bead polystyrene? How strong will it be? How will it preserve detail? All of that. So there's a lot to learn on a project like this. I haven't done anything of this scale before. So basically, um, I'm going to take some time and go through and complete this to a final stage before moving on. I hope the customer can understand that. It will add a little time to completing the project, but I know the end result will be so much better because there's so much to learn on this. So what I'd like to do today is walk you through the work that's been done. I've included some, I'm going to include some videos that I took of using some of the hot wire foam tools to do some of this carving so you can get a sense of how some of it was done and um, talk about some of the things that I've learned and um, where it's going to go from here. So what I've done here is I've made this a little lower than the actual castle wall will be, the future project, um, to give me um, a little bit less space to work with so I could do this mock-up a little more quickly, as well as make it a more of a standalone piece. I do plan on selling this when it's completed, um, as I'm hoping it will be finished to a high enough level that that will be all right. Uh, so um, basically this is, um, I think this is 10 inches high. I'd have to measure it, but it's not relevant for today's dis discussion. One customer, after all of that debate about wrapping foam around the outside edge, you know, somebody mentioned basically just carving it as it is. And I realized that that might be the way to go as wrapping pieces around some of these narrower uh, diameters is going to be even more tricky than this large surface which has a relatively large circumference. So I decided to do something I've never done before and go right in and carve the expanded bead styrene itself. One of the things I was concerned about is the seams between the layers and I realized after some experimentation that if I carve right into the seam as part of one of the brick layers that will mask it and it won't show. Um, that meant that I had to do um, some tricky manipulation with the hot wires engraving tool. And what I did is I mounted the tool on the sled at a point and then I could drag the wall across it to score perfectly even lines all the way across. And I'll show you a little snip of that video here. So here I've sped it up um, about five times, but you can see I've got the hot wire tool mounted to the sled and I've clamped the sled to the table. This allows me to adjust the angle uh, of the blade on the engraving tool, <clears throat> excuse me, and its height. And so what I did is I you know, marked the, the wall at various points um, in, vertically and then I can go in, adjust the engraving tool exactly to that height and know that it's gonna stay fixed for the duration of my cut. Uh, then I have to hand guide the wall across and uh, one of the tricks is just controlling the depth of the blade and especially on such a large circumference as this it did take a, a little bit of practice and uh, you know sometimes it went in a little deeper than I had planned uh, sometimes there you can see the clamp I'm using just a, a quick clamp there to hold it to the table but um, overall I felt like I probably wanted a deeper cut on these blocks as the foam coat layers are going to fill in some of that detail so having a deeper cut in the the overall brick you know lattice work is going to I think work out okay in the end um, and basically um, you see me just finishing you know layer after layer after layer with making sure that I have equal spacing as best I can between the glue joins and then making the glue join one of the layers that I cut So what I had to do is build blocks to hold it up, you know, all that, and I was able to score all these lines. Then I drew a um, piece of string across the surface with marks on it to draw the, the um, 
cross lines and I realized I made the marks on the lines too large. I was thinking I wanted one inch blocks so I put a line every one inch but of course because it's every other mark gets the strike I ended up with two inch wide blocks and by the time I realized what was going on it was already too late so I continued it with the rest of the wall. Produces kind of, zoom in here a little bit, on the wall itself. Whoops, excuse me for that. That's a little bit chaotic. Um, it produces kind of a large block. Here's a uh, <clears throat> vampire count skeleton just to give you a sense of scale. So the blocks are definitely a little big. But, you know, for the outer wall, I don't know. It started to kind of look like it might work. So I'm going to leave it. Again, there's another test. Let's see how that finishes up. Um, I dropped a straight edge, scored all of those lines. That's how I did the outer wall. There's going to be some benefits to using this, this, this expanded bead um, by itself as well in the interior of the castle as it's going to save me an inch of space on either side of each wall and that means that the inner floor can be larger and there's a Muma kill issue that I'd still like to try to accommodate so that there might be some extra benefits to that. Then what I did is I carved these um, towers against the wall. What I did is I carved a single cylinder using the same technique and I decided to mark the blocks properly now. So now these are the one inch blocks instead of the two inch blocks. And I thought that makes a nice contrast to the larger wall section. Uh, so this again might work pretty well in the end. And so here you can see um, when I carved the towers themselves, I glued all the blocks together uh, after cutting them in, um, I think, two, uh, you know, four inch, uh, basically two glued to each other, so I get four inch layers. And uh, what you can see here is I used a couple bricks to hold up the sled and then clamp that to the table so that I could continue to increase the height all the way up to the uh, maximum height that I need for the tower. So really, you can use the sled in this manner to carve, you know, to any height. Um, and again, then once I've got it in place, I can make, you know, quick adjustment, reline it up to the next layer, and then go and, and uh, score that into the foam. Um, it's a time-consuming process based on its height, but each line goes relatively quickly once you get the hang of it, but controlling the depth is the real key. I carved the entire cylinder, cut the cylinder in half, made a little bit of a gouge so it would fit snug against the curved surface, and got two out of one for that. Then I decided to go and make the, um, uh, the top dressing, which hides, let me see here, I'll uh, pan to the side here, you can see, there we go, that I've used a... Um, um, uh, high density foam for the walkway. I wanted it to have a different texture and a little bit more resilience. Um, and uh, I wanted to hide that join as I can't carve this and expect that to look like the same texture. And I was planning on doing something like this anyway. So what I did is I created a um, single sheet and then this I did bend to the wall. It is, let's pan up here and you can see it from the top. It's a half an inch thick. And uh, here's a different miniature here, just to give you a sense. Comes up about waist high on the miniatures. You know, if you look at it from a uh, more of an eye level here. All right. Um, but I was afraid of putting in crenellations into the upper part because I didn't know how to do that. So I decided to skip it for this section, think about it some more, just dress it, stick it on, make sure I could curve it to the surface well. And then I used um, a little shaped hot wire tool to carve out these. Um, they ended up being a little bit irregular because I eyeballed it and I figured out how to improve that when I did it on the towers. But overall... I thought that came out pretty nicely, actually. Gave it a little taper on the edge there, and uh, I don't know. I was pretty pleased with that. It was starting to look a little bit more like a castle. Then, before I continued with the wall, um, or with the tower, I mean, um, I basically had, I was planning on building it up about this high and having it be a flat back against the back of the wall. And I realized I didn't know how to fix the back of it to make, you know, I could make stairs, whatever. Then I'd have to dress this. It wouldn't really look like a tower built out. So I decided instead to take this piece, retrim it to be flat with the wall. So that's the seam that you see here. And I'm going to try to hide that with some lightweight spackle. We'll see how that goes. Um, and I um, trimmed that. And then, before I continued with this, I wanted to separate the walls. So let me show you how I did that. Now, because this entire piece is too large, really, to ship as a single piece, I wanted to make the walls separable and have a magnetic attachment for it. I haven't put the magnets in yet. Another experiment yet to come. So what I did is I thought I would use the edge of the tower as the seam join so that the edge of the tower would mask the join on the, bro on the blocks and you wouldn't see it from the front of the castle. So before I added this top section here, let's pan back a little bit maybe. 
So before I added this top section here, which sticks out quite a bit, um, I went in and I actually um, threw it on the 3D scroll table and I just, with a very fine wire, I just cut right through the wall and separated it right there. I got a really nice clean edge to that um, and that's going to be, um, I think, a pretty easy surface to insert magnets into and get a good, um, a good join. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but I like the way that cut came out and it hides it pretty well. After that, I finished um, making a few more full circles, and here, actually, I should show it probably from this angle. So here you can see that the full circles come across the walkway, um, and that I was a little bit, again, I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that or not. Um, and in retrospect, looking at it, perhaps I could have raised it up even a little more. I thought what I'd do is I'll put in a small um, shaped block in the back here that'll section off the walls, and then you could think of it as, you know, isolating sections for combat and put doors into the uh, towers on either side to allow movement between the wall sections. But then you could sort of, you know, isolate them with uh, like bulkheads almost, right, to control uh, troops moving along the top of the wall. The nice thing about this is then it made finishing the top of the tower a lot easier. I didn't have to worry about putting in stairs and I could give something that looks really much more like a tower at the top. Now one of the concerns is that the um, expanded polystyrene has a different surface texture. It's much smoother and actually I'm probably going to go in. I've been seeing a lot of kitty litter recommendations that look awesome uh, for adding texture. Um, I'll, so I'll probably texture this a little bit, but this is definitely going to look different than the expanded polystyrene. So what I decided to do is go with a different kind of a, of a shape for it for the actual, you know, um, whatever you want to call it, cobblestone or, or stonework that's been done especially because I felt very uncomfortable trying to do radial stonework, like I'd need a good compass, I'd still want to use the engraving tool, I don't know, I could maybe use a compass with a pen, but if I'm going to be applying foam coat to this, I really need a bigger indentation to receive the foam coat because I'm afraid it will fill in very small details. So I wanted to use the hot wire engraver for this, and that meant that um, I don't have an easy way of doing it mechanically, so I did it freehand and I decided I'd go with an irregular cobblestone pattern. This is all freehand work, took me a little while to do it, matches on the other tower as well. And the nice thing is that I can carry that onto the upper walkway as well without having to worry about again a new radius that I have to get exactly right to make perfectly symmetrical blocks all the way across. I'm going to see how this comes out and if I like it I'll continue it onto the final project and if I don't I'll have to come up with some kind of new idea for that but that's down the road. The last thing I should mention about the towers is one of the interesting things about the um, scroll table, and I did not shoot a video of this, so you'll have to use your imagination here. But um, what I wanted to do is after I cut the 5-inch cylinders to fill the core of the tower, I wanted to build this outside um, tower, you know, sort of uh, dressing. And what I decided to do is take advantage of the 3D scroll table's ability to be able to cut perfect circles within circles and retain the outer shell. So, let's see here. What I did is, now you're going to, well, wait a minute here. This is probably better if I do it like this. Let's do it like this. All right, so you see this core fits right in there. Let me scroll up a little more. Oh, the limits of my camera and tripod. There we go. So what I did is I originally cut this outside edge. This is, uh, I don't know, say six uh, and a quarter inches diameter to produce a, a three quarter edge lip. A little wide, I think. I might go back to the half inch. I wanted to try it out though. And then drilling a hole in the center of the block with um, just the hot wire knife. You know, I just gouged out a hole. Then I could detach the wire, feed the wire through that hole, and then make a second circle inside this, the, the outer ring, and then remove this as a perfect piece from the interior and have an absolutely seamless circle around the outside edge. So that way I didn't have to worry about you know fitting this and gluing it and hiding a seam where the wire exited the foam. Um, and that worked out really well. Uh, that's a nice ability that you can't do with most hot wire tables. Really, really like that. So anyway, that's how I did that. And then again, I finished dressing it with, um, let's scroll down. This is a kind of a movie video here, so hopefully you follow me. Um, then what I did is I used the hot wire at an angle, 
and I freely spun. I should have done this first before I cut the circle. I should have tapered it, then cut the circle because I'd lost my, my pivot point. But then I spun it around by hand, trimmed this angle here, and then went in with a hot wire tool to cut out these, these ridges again. Um, one of the nice things, um, let's go back to adhesives for a second here. I used, since I just did a video on the adhesives, I used the spray adhesive on the wall. Very nice because it's got a real fast tack and it's easy to apply evenly to a large, large surface. For the towers, I did the spray adhesive as well. But when I um, added um, these up here, I used some of the foam fusion since I had recently done the experiment on it and the foam fusion was great. Or not the foam fusion, the styro goo, I mean. And then, because I was worried about instant tack, I had to slide this over that tower down several inches. I didn't want the fast tack, so here I used the foam fusion, which has the longer cure time, and that worked out really well. Threw a rubber band around these edges to make sure that they would pin up against it, and it seemed to hold it on pretty well. There is, a, there are, I should say, proper grammar. Uh, there are a few, let's see if we can see one. I think you can see. There's still a little bit of a gap in between here. I'm expecting some of these gaps to be filled with some of the uh, foam coat when I apply that to strengthen it. Um, but a couple of these larger holes I might go in with a, just a little lightweight spackle just to give them some bulking out so the foam coat can fill that in more easily. So I did that to both sides and um, finished both of the towers. Um, oh, last thought on the crenellations. Um, I had no good way of mechanically carving these. I meaning mechanically like I could rigidly control you know the actuation of the hot wire either on the table or by hand. I'm not sure how other people have done it so I hand cut these just being really careful with the hot wire knife to just drop it down, score it around, and pick it up as even as I can. It came out better than I expected, to be honest. I thought they were gonna look a little bit odd. Um, and uh, of course, they still have lots of um, angel hairs on them. I haven't done any sanding or anything. I'm gonna lightly sand off most of that, and then the foam coat should cover that and hide that. Again, we'll, we'll see how that goes, um, but that's the plan. I usually, once I've carved foam like this, I usually take a brush, um, a stiff brush, but nothing too strong that'll tear the foam, and I scrub it over the surface just to break off most of those hairs before I go on, and I haven't done that yet on any of the surfaces, so that's work to be done. So the problems that I, I should have done uh, that I'll fix in the future is, um, as I mentioned before, carving that taper before carving the circles out. Um, also, I realized that before I carved, before I cut the wall, I should have done the back dressing for the wall um, as it would span this part here, and then I would get a nice clean cut between those pieces. Um, so now I'm gonna have to just try to join them as tightly as I can. Uh, and that, you know, it just adds a little extra work. It shouldn't be, you know, too onerous, but in retrospect, having the whole top dressing of the back wall done before making this cut would have been a good idea. I also, though, was thinking it might be easier to carve this rock surface before I add the dressing. So, you know, ups and downs, it's hard to tell. So what are the two um, last sort of problem areas that I have to solve um, for this before I, I foam coat it? One is putting in the doorway. I'd like a large portcullis type um, entryway. I will have it fixed. I'm not going to worry about making it move movable, you know, in or out or anything like that. Um, but I want to add some dressing around that. So that has to be done. I'll be hand cutting the portcullis doorway out of this. Um, so having done the crenellations on the towers, you know, helps to give me some sense of what I will need to do here. And I think that will be okay. Mm. And then lastly, um, I'm going to need to put a stairway on uh, at least one side of this wall on the, uh, on the inside, you know, coming up so people can access it. And that is going to have to match the inner curvature of this, um, which is something I'll have to do on the main castle project as well. So it's good to get a little practice on this. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, I'm going to have to think about how to control that cut. Um, probably I will use the similar technique I did to the walls, which was the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the 
what's my what's the word I'm looking for compass you know with the meter stick idea to um, control the radius of the cut and then probably slice it into pieces and stack it something like that I don't think that'll be too difficult but we'll have to see and then as it comes up to the top I have to think about how it's going to join the top and how that top dressing will meet that as well so there's a few aesthetic things to work out still um, and those are the um, next areas for development of this. And then finally, we'll be installing the magnets, making sure they line up and give a strong enough bond that um, it will hold it you know, in place together really well during play. So that's an involved update on how this project has gone so far. Um, and of course, it's a strange thing. You know, I felt really bad when I cut the outer wall and uh, wasted all that foam and was like, what am I going to do with this? And I'll do something with it down the road and then realizing I should make lemonade instead of cry over my lemons and get some practice in. So, uh, you know, I always say that to people who are working on their terrain and they're saying, oh, it didn't come out right. And it's like, it never comes out right the first time. Uh, there's definitely things that I will improve on this for the second version. Uh, you know, it's a learning process and you have to practice. That's the only way to get better at it. So hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, feel free to leave comments, questions down below and keep an eye on the channel. I'll have another video out real soon with updates not only on this, but some other projects I've got going on in the shop.